So one of the best and most empowering features Xbox has had in its corner the entire generation has to be backwards compatibility that the Xbox ecosystem provides us. It's not just some simple back compat feature either, instead it provides some games being enhanced to greater fidelity and resolution, which to many people's surprise comes at no extra cost to us the consumers. All of the heavy lifting for this feature is being carried by Microsoft themselves and the developers they have behind the tech. Which brings me to the topic at hand. We all know that Sony is trying to take this amazing advantage away from Xbox Next Generation when they launch the PlayStation 5. Yet, I feel they won't be able to do exactly what the Xbox Series X is doing and what Microsoft has done on the back end to make this an easy transition for everyone involved. And that includes the developers making the games. So why is it that this developer from Typhoon Studios finds the back compat feature to be a concerning factor for him and the developers that work in his company? Let's dive into the article and see if the feature that's loved by so many consumers is actually holding developers back and holding the Xbox Series X and the PS5 back. But like always, before we dive into the article, if you like the video, hit that subscribe button and that like button. The support is greatly appreciated. So enough of that, let's get into this article. As we all know, many years ago, Xbox set out on a mission to provide back compat to everyone that was on the Xbox platform. And not just from one previous generation. At the start, it was just Xbox 360, but their ambitions turned far greater. They even wanted to provide Xbox games with the ability to play old Xbox games on the Xbox One. It was a bold move, yet something that was possible because of the talented programmers that work at Microsoft. And after years of adding new games and providing hundreds of titles for us to play on one Xbox, people started to wonder if this feature would make its way to the new Xbox Series X console, and naturally, it did. But at what cost? That's where this article starts to take shape, and how some developers are starting to get a little worried about what that means for them. Because like all companies do in competition, once Xbox was able to provide back compat to games, Sony was soon behind to allow the same feature on their new PS5 console coming. And that's what the article mentions when it says this. It's only February, but the hype around the Xbox Series X and PS5, the next generation of consoles, is palpable. Whether it's waiting for prices or more details, especially from Sony who has yet to showcase their console, the cycle of hype is inextricably linked to how little we actually know. However, one topic that's been discussed a bit more lately is backwards compatibility. While Sony admitted that backwards compatibility was still in the works, Microsoft is committed to supporting a large number of Xbox One and Xbox 360 titles for its next-gen console. How much impact does the feature actually have though? We spoke to Typhoon Studios creative director and co-founder Alex Hutchinson, who recently released Journey to the Savage Planet about the same time. So let's stop it right here, because this does paint a little bit of a different picture. While we all love talking about specs and seeing which console will have the power advantage, or which console will have richer features, we have to remember a lot of what these companies do don't just affect us as gamers. It also affects the people creating the games. And while Xbox has been one of the most user-friendly companies around in the last couple of years, they still of course have to listen to their other customers, which is the developers. And that's exactly what they did when they implemented the new back compat feature on the Xbox One. The developers that allowed their games to be back compat had to do nothing on their end. All that was required of them was for them to give the okay to Xbox. Everything else was done on the back end at Microsoft. They ran their scripts and added the game to the back compat list. It was an elegant design and executed to almost perfection. So when a developer speaks out on back compat causing more work, I have to wonder who they're actually talking about. Because I know it's not Xbox. Here's what was said. Concerning the impact that backwards compatibility has on both developers and consumers, Hutchinson said, Sony and Microsoft seem to be thinking about releasing more updated hardware more often, like phones. And so they need to make sure software can stick around or they'll do terrible things to devs. But really, it just means we need to do more work supporting more platforms, which removes one of the best things about consoles, a reliable box with a long shelf life. Now, I don't know about the whole phones aspect of this. I don't think we'll see new and improved consoles come out every single year. That would be a little crazy, honestly. But I do understand what this guy is trying to say if that was going to be the case. But as we've seen already, that's just not happening. We've had one mid-generation console that is still going to be out three or four years before the new consoles come out. 
And like I pointed out earlier, there isn't much work needed by developers from Xbox's end, especially since we know that a lot of people that worked at Xbox have said if you make a game on Xbox, you'll be making it for Xbox X Cloud, along with all the other platforms that Xbox is a part of. That's We've made this easy for game developers too. They just need to approve titles showing up. No work is required on their part to make all of this possible. That's the beauty of developing on that ecosystem. It's far more compatible with multiple devices and services, which includes back compat. As for Sony, I think that's where the problem lies because they haven't confirmed that type of software development and haven't even really confirmed full back compat. So I think the developer might be discussing that because we've seen throughout history that PlayStation has struggled with back compat, especially when you look at the PS3 games. In order for you to even play PS3 games on the PS4, you have to stream them through their paid service PS Now. All the while, Xbox just allows you to put in a disc or even download them digitally and play them directly on your Xbox. So maybe this developer is really talking about PlayStation and thinks that Xbox is the same way, where they have to do a lot of the heavy lifting in regards to allowing and creating for back compat. Because as I stated before, Xbox has been very vocal about this feature and how it's friendly on both ends for the consumers, aka us the gamers, and the developers, the people actually providing us these amazing games. But at the end of the day, it's all about the developers and their ease of use. So to hear someone say something negative about it or imply that it costs a lot more work does bring up some questions. And that's what this article says here. While it sounds obvious, it's still interesting to think about how a developer has to approach the issue. In the long run, instead of devoting resources to a new title or new content, a developer would have to focus on supporting more and more platforms for its existing titles. The benefits of working on consoles over PC begin to blur in that regard. Now, I understand the concern that most fans will have about this, which could be legitimate concerns, but I have to say, I don't think that's going to be the case. I have a feeling that the software Microsoft is developing for, the Xbox Series X, is going to make this transition extremely easy for developers. I say that because it's already happening. Most developers don't have to do anything to their games to work on the Xbox back compat. Microsoft has an Xbox team dedicated to just back compat, and they're already hard at work preparing everything to work on the Xbox Series X. They're the one console manufacturer to confirm this. All the while, Sony has just hinted that back compat is still in the works. So I think most developers will have to put more effort in regards to the PlayStation platform, which like this developer just said, will cause a little bit more work for them. Let's hope Sony is able to replicate what Xbox has done and are able to make this a very easy transition for developers. Because like all of you, I want all of my purchases on both consoles to come with me to my next generation consoles. Let's hope both parties can execute this. But enough about what I think about all this. Tell me what you think of this. Is Backup Pat important to you? Are you worried about what Backup Pat could do to developers? Do you think Xbox is going about this the right way? Can Sony's PlayStation improve their Backup Pat format? Do you want all your games to come with you next generation? What company is set up better for this feature? Is this really going to hold back PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X? Go down below and let me know. And I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please hit that subscribe button and that like button. The support helps out the channel more than you know. And give me a follow on Twitter at Zalker87. I'm always on there talking games and sharing my latest videos. Plus, I love interacting with everyone there. So go on Twitter and let's talk about gaming. Also, follow me on Xbox Live. My gamer tag is Zalker87, just like my channel name. See what games I'm playing and let's compete in achievements for the month. Spoiler alert, I'm probably not going to beat you. And that's all for now. Thanks for watching. And until next time, remember, enjoy your game. Gaming. Later.